crabgrass is considered to be a summer annual, and, and in Maryland we have two common species of crabgrass. We have the uh, common crabgrass, which is known as the Digitaria sanguinellis, and then we have the smooth crabgrass, which is known as uh, Digitaria ischemum. But both of them are summer annuals. They actively grow through the summer period, uh, produce a lot of seed head, uh, will die at the first frost uh, or the cooler weather as we move into the fall, and then a lot of that seed uh, can germinate the following year. One that's known as common crab or hairy crab, and what's characteristic of that particular species is the presence of the hair on the sheath, where if I look at the smooth crab, I don't see any of the hair on the sheath. And then other than that, they look identical. Uh, uh, the other thing about crabgrass, uh, both the uh, common and, and our smooth crabgrass, is that as they uh, mature, they have the ability to produce stolons. So you can see here where I've got stolons running along, and, and in some cases you could have one plant that gets itself established and then can take up a, a square foot area of where it uh, is producing a lot of stolon and spreads out from that particular point. Once again, when looking at crabgrass, uh, one of the good traits or characteristics is this really prominent uh, legume. The other important vegetative characteristic is the fact that uh, as the leaves emerge, they're going to be a rolled leaf renation. So the rolled leaf renation is just another important trait characteristic of the crabgrass. The inflorescence of crabgrass has is is been described as a digitate spike. So the main seed stem or comb comes up and then the actual flower will be on these various spikelets that are attached uh, to the uh, to the branching rakes or rakei that you see here, um, you know it is a summer annual, so it is dependent upon producing a lot of seed that will then germinate the following year. The goosegrass is a summer annual. It's um, similar to crabgrass in that it's you know actively growing during the uh, summer period. Just kind of the growth habit uh, differs you know from crabgrass in that this is more of a bunch type. Uh, kind of sits flat or prostrate to the ground uh, and you'll normally see a lot of the, the lighter color leaf sheath that's going to be characteristic in looking at goosegrass. Uh, you won't really see any kind of stolen or rising, once again bunch type uh, growth characteristic too. Uh, the other thing too about goosegrass is you'll see it normally in areas where we have a lot of compaction or foot traffic. Uh, generally you'll see uh, the goosegrass kind of do quite well in those locations. The ligule of goosegrass has been described as a membranous ligule, short. However, the other thing you'll notice is that there will be some hair towards the base as we go around the collar that kind of surrounds uh, the ligule area. So that, as you pull it back, is, um, is going to be indicative or characteristic of goosegrass. Goosegrass is described as having a folded leaf renation. So when we're determining whether it's fold or roll, we're looking at this younger leaf coming up. And as it emerges, it's going to be your, really with grass is fold or rolled. So this sample goosegrass, this leaf, as it's emerging, is folded. The inflorescence for goosegrass, um, it's described as you know, similar to the crabgrass a, a spike. Uh, so we have these individual spikelets that are attached to this rachis, and it will come up and it will branch, as you can see here. Uh, probably one of the differences to me is that, that these spikelets are you know, generally much larger than when you compare them to the crabgrass plant. The example you're looking at here is uh, one of the foxtail species. There's really three that are fairly common here in the Maryland area. And this is one of the summer annual grasses. Um, we see it germinate in the spring, actively growing throughout the summer, and then uh, producing these very characteristic seed heads uh, for uh, the foxtails. The other thing about foxtails, they, they really don't produce you know, a stolen or rising. They, Pretty much more of a bunch type growth characteristic to the uh, to the foxtails. Foxtails they will have a rolled leaf formation, so you want to look to the youngest leaf as it emerges to determine whether it's rolled or folded. But all of them will have a very similar type of ligule, which I don't know. I've heard it described as kind of membranous um, towards the base and then shredded at the tip. Uh, that kind of gives it like a almost a hairy type of appearance when you look at the ligule. The uh, different foxtail species they look. Almost exactly the same. The, the way to tell some of the, the three species that we see here in the Maryland area is looking at the presence of hair on the leaf blade. Uh, the sample that you're looking here is yellow foxtail, which is Ceteria glauca. And um, one, once again, what's characteristic is these long hairs towards the lower portion of the leaf blade as it comes down towards the collar. Now the sample you're looking here is giant foxtail. 
And what's going to be characteristic is all the sh really short hair that's on the upper leaf blade. So this would be uh, known as Ceteria fabri for the uh, giant foxtail. Once again, just looking at the upper leaf blade as we looked at some of the other species, but you just won't see any hair on the upper leaf blade for the green foxtail. And that's known as Ceteria verdis. The sample here is a barnyard grass. It's another summer annual uh, grass that's present in the Maryland area. It's normally associated in wet, uh, high fertility type soil conditions where we see uh, this plant grow. And um, it has a rolled leaf renation. Now the samples you see here now, or the sample here, you're seeing just a lot of flower uh, type production or inflorescence type of production. Uh, the, the genus species name is Echinocloa. Uh, Criscali is the uh, genus species name for our uh, barnyard grass. I'm going to look at where the blade and the sheath come together. And most of the grasses will have some type of uh, a ligule, the ones that we've been looking at mainly more of a membranous ligule, but what's kind of unique with barnyard grass is that you really won't find any ligule. And so to me, that's an important characteristic. So the sample trait. here is just the inflorescence of uh, barnyard grass, and it's considered more of like a panicle type inflorescence. You may notice that on the uh, uh, awns, or these are these kind of needle-like uh, attachments that we see that typically come off of the lemma, and uh, once again, it's very characteristic of the barnyard inflorescence. This is Nimble Well. It's actually a warm season perennial as opposed to a, a summer annual so that it actively grows uh, through the summer period but doesn't die because it has uh, a lot of stolen type growth um, but has the ability to survive as a perennial here in the Maryland area. Probably most people what it looks like is some type of a Bermuda grass but it's got a very stemmy uh, type growth. Uh, some people call it a tufted a growth characteristic when we look at uh, nimble well and um, you know once again if we start to pull back you will see a lot of stolen type growth to uh, to nimble well. Nimble well is described uh, with the ligule as a very short very mem uh, membranous ligule and once again because of the size of the plant that can be very difficult to see. Uh, the other thing with nimble well is that you'll find it to be a rolled leaf renation. Uh, the genus species is uh, Muhlenbergia sherberi is the uh, genus species for nimble well. Showing the uh, inflorescence or the seed head for nimble well. And uh, you know, if we compare it to something like Bermuda grass, you can see some really big differences where the uh, seed stalk kind of comes up as one main seed stalk. If we're dealing with Bermuda grass, it kind of comes up and splits. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, the Nimble well may look a lot like the Bermuda grass, but that inflorescence is uh, very characteristic of Nimble. Sample.